Marcy, Skylight, Gray, Cliff, and Redfield done. Now the long walk back to the lodge. 3.55 a.m., just signed in. San Antonio range, let's go. The wind is whipping here in the Seward range today. Just finished the Macomb slide and my legs are on fire. Well, I fell victim to the floating logs again. Made it to the top of East Dix. Peak number three of five for today here in the Walking Dix range. Along Avalanche Pass. On top of Rocky Peak Bridge. It's like a hurricane up here. Rain and wind here on Tabletop. Whiteface, number six. Muddy day here on Street and Nye for number seven and eight. Sunny and blue on Haystack. Algonquin, up in the clouds, number 18. Gothics, number 22. Panther, number 38. Allen, number 45. 712 AM, big slide, Adirondack 46er. You're listening to the 46 of 46 podcast. And welcome back to the 46 of 46 podcast. We are in the end of September and fall is in full swing here in the ADK. The leaves are colorful. The air is crisp and chilly. Oh, it's just an absolute magnificent time to be up in the Adirondack Park. And if you don't have plans to come up in the next couple of weeks, it's time to change those plans. Get yourself up to the park. You will not regret it. It is just one of the most magnificent times of year. I'm so lucky. I'm so privileged to get to live here. Every time I drive out of my driveway, I see the mountains covered in leaves and colorful reds and oranges and yellows. It's just awesome. So if uh, you're not planning to come up here, it's time to change your plans. And uh, just let your boss know, James at the 4646 Podcast said it was cool. So you can take off work and just let him know. I also said that you guys can uh, get paid while you take off work. Totally cool. So just tell them that you have permission from me to take off and come on up to the park. And uh, your boss will just accept that because it works every time. So uh, it's the time of year to be here in the ADK. And it's just going to be me on the microphone this week. But I'm going to be talking about something that I've recently had the same conversation probably three different times in the last two weeks. I feel so passionately about this subject, and I, I'm always talking about it in my, in my posts and on my page. I, I talk about it in the podcast. The 46er banquet is this weekend, and uh, I just recently guided a couple to their 46er journey and then another friend of mine is now at 45 of 46, and she's about to finish. And then another friend of mine just finished the 46. And it's just like I'm just constantly having, uh, seeing this, you know, this information and this, these having these conversations with people. And I just felt like this is, this is what it's all about. The main thing that I notice, and the reason that I call the 46er journey a journey, is because you are not the same person when you start the 46 that you are when you finish the 46 it is a literal journey that you're going on you know when you first start you do your first mount and it's hard you're like man that was hard that was that was weird you don't have the right gear most of the time you you don't have an understanding of the mountains you don't have an understanding of the trails and what to expect and then by the time you finish you think back to that person and it a feels like that is like a different human being than it is when you finish the way you look at the mountains are different the way you look at the trails and the adirondack park in general and just nature just the outdoors it just it changes you go on a journey a transforming journey transformative journey excuse me and i that's why i call it that you know i don't really i don't really know if other people refer to refer to it as a journey, but that's just what I've always called it because I don't know what else to say about it because you just, you transform and that's a beautiful thing. You know, there's not a lot of things in life where as adults, we become like kids on Christmas Eve who are so antsy and excited and just beaming with joy at the anticipation of what's coming tomorrow. You know, I just, as I mentioned earlier, I just guided a, a couple to their 46 finish. Shout out to Eric and Diane. And they're a couple in their 60s. Yes, they're in their 60s and they're still crushing high peaks. So uh, there's some inspiration for all of you out there. And, uh, you know, she couldn't sleep the night before. And I remember I couldn't sleep the night before I was going to finish too. And then another friend of mine, Sarah, is about to finish and you could just tell by talking to her how just excited she is. You know, these mountains, they changed her world. And uh, that's what they do. That's what they did for me. That's what they probably did for most of you who listen to this podcast. They just change everything about you. And in my opinion, 
something that is, you know, pure and innocent in this world that that can bring out that childlike joy in adults, especially in, you know, we know how tough the world is. We know how tough life can be. You know, life hits hard, right? But when you have something that makes you feel like a kid again, you're you're like a kid on Christmas Eve. Well, that's a beautiful freaking thing. And, you know, these 46 high peaks, they do that. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, they kind of crap on the whole idea of becoming a 46er or they crap on the 46ers organization, which crapping on the organization is completely stupid. Um, the amount of good they do is just absolutely incredible. But I understand when people don't like the idea of peak bagging, but at the same time, you know, it's good to have, it's good to have a goal. It's good to have something you're working towards and it's hard. Anyone that does it, you, you know, you have to show them respect and, you know, people get upset that the outdoors, it's too crowded now. And I, if you listen to this podcast long enough, you know that I kind of feel completely opposite about that. Yes, it, there's more people retreating to the outdoors, but I see that as a good thing. We should get outdoors. We should get into nature. We should get on, into the mountains. It's better for our soul. And then it creates better people. And then those people create a better world to live in. And then those people who got to the outdoors, had a good time, enjoyed themselves, transformed even, they become advocates for the outdoors and the Adirondack Park in particular, which is the place that I call home. So that's why I am the type of person that I want to share the park with people. You know, I recently had someone message me on Instagram because I shared a, a foliage picture and they wrote, shh, don't tell anyone. And I, you know, had a little chat back and forth with him and it was, it was, you know, obviously a playful playful message. But, you know, I said, I don't really get down with that. Don't share. Don't tell people about this beautiful place. This park is so big and so massive and so grand and uh, so perfect. And uh, there's enough space for all of us to enjoy it. And we should. And it's just, it's an incredible thing. But while I was talking to my friend, Sarah, and then Eric and Diane, who I guided to 46, you know, I, I had the same conversations with them listening to how these mountains have changed their lives. And we were going back and forth about things that we've learned about, about life, about, you know, ourselves all because of these 46 mountains. And, uh, and it's not just the high peaks, you know, it's, it, it, it's any, any mountain that you're climbing, especially here in the park, you know, this place becomes the type of area that grabs people's hearts and does not let go. So, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily, this isn't just about the high peaks, but you know, Anything here in the Adirondacks, I feel like this is pretty applicable to, but there is something special about those high peaks. There's something, something, you know, absolutely mysterious about them. You know, I always say that every mountain is a character in your story when you're done. It, it, it's, there's a, there's a story to tell about every mountain there and they're a different person in your head. Yeah, they're, they're mountains, but they, they become people. They become people with, you know, characteristics and, and unique stories that you experienced while climbing this mountain, which is going to be different from the story that I experienced or somebody else experienced. And But yet we climbed the same mountain and we had drastically different experiences. So there, these, these mountains become different characters in our head. And, you know, a lot of people tell, you know, I'll get messages pretty, pretty regularly about uh, Cliff Mountain because I've been pretty vocal on the podcast. Like, I just didn't. I've never had a good experience on Cliff. And, uh, you know, it's no big deal. It's just, it's just what it is. And it's kind of become a joke at this point. But then there's other days pe people have just had this, the greatest experience on it. And it's just like different experiences, different days. And that's what makes these, this place so magical. I mean, it is a playground for adults. It is a playground for people who like the outdoors. And like I was saying before, these mountains, they bring out a childlike innocence and joy. And what a beautiful thing that we can still experience that as adults. You know, you think when you're not a kid, you're not a kid anymore. So you move on and, you know, life hits and, you know, we become grumps, right? Well, that tends to change everyone when they're here in the high peaks. And I, I think it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, continuing with this 46er conversation too, uh, a huge congratulations to all of you who are going to listen to this podcast while you drive north to the Adirondacks, to Lake Placid this weekend for the Adirondack 46er banquet. Congratulations to you all. Um, you you accomplish something that is hard, something that requires dedication. It requires grit. It requires not quitting. And I guarantee that you are a transformed person. I'd be 
I'd love to hear someone who says they're not uh, by the time they finish, because I would just uh, love to hear hear your story about why you're not. But congratulations to all of you. You are uh, Adirondack 46. There's nobody can ever take that away from you. That's an accomplishment you should hold close to your heart. And uh, I certainly do. Now, after I guided Eric and Diane to 46, you know, we had a you know, nice summit conversation on the, on the, on big slide, which is also where I finished the 46. Um, Eric and Diane are amazing. They're big fans of the show. They bought the, my ebook and they pretty much followed my kind of instruction in the ebook mountain by mountain. And they even finished on the same mountain that I did and that I recommend in the ebook because I like the idea of the 46 er journey finishing as a victory lap more than a, a long slog because we all know what those long days are like. So in my mind, it's, it was just so perfect to finish the big stuff and then have a, you know, a day like big slide or a day like cascade and Porter or, you know, even Phelps and tabletop, you know, have a day like that. That's like, that's where you're finishing. It just becomes a victory lap. So they followed my ebook pretty religiously. They had it printed out. They had it in their backpack. Uh, I'm a very, very, um, very thankful, very grateful for you and anyone else who's bought the ebook and found, uh, found it to be a useful resource. I appreciate it greatly by purchasing that book. You help keep this podcast going. And, uh, I am, uh, I am very grateful for you deeming it worthy of your money. So thank you very much for all of you who've purchased it. And I hope it's been a very good resource for you guys as you, as you climb the 46 high peaks, but moving on to, uh, this social media post. So I probably have never had nearly as much interaction on just a general post that I, you know, didn't expect anything to have happened to. I, I think there was probably 30 comments and, uh, you know, conversations sparked and people agreed. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting because I always talk about how the mountains will teach you a lot about yourself. They will teach you a lot about real life if you let them. I talk about it in the book and I'd say it on the podcast a lot. And I say it a lot when I have conversations with people about the mountains. The mountains are a beautiful thing. And, you know, it's, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice and we're doing the mountains a disservice by not realizing that by just looking at them as simply, I'm just going to go walk up a hill get to the top. Yeah, it's cool. I'm going to walk back down. Like there is such a bigger picture quality here in the high peaks and in just in general, in the outdoors, there's just so many things that we can take away and we can learn from and we can better ourselves and apply it to real life. So that's what I made this post about. And that's kind of what I'm going to go into here on this episode. I want to expand on what I wrote and uh, just have a conversation, you know, I guess with myself really at this point, but uh, this is uh, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. On top of the fact that I wanted to congratulate all of you for becoming Forty Sixers, who are going to the banquet, and to just continue to say, continue to talk about the fact that this is a journey, and it's amazing when there's something in life that can help adults feel like kids again. It's just so good. Oh, I could just flip this table here as I'm <laughs> podcasting on because it gets me so fired up and psyched. But. Back to the uh, the social media posts that I made. I'm just sitting here talking about ways that the Adir- that the Adirondack Mountains, that any mountains, they teach you a lot about yourself. And I'm just going to go into the different lessons that I have learned, that I have found to be truths that I learned from the mountains, and where that I can I can learn, I can gather from, you know, situations and stories that I've I've had that took place in the mountains, but. The first lesson that I've learned from the mountains is that nobody can get you to the summit and it is up to you to do the work. So we all know no one's bringing you up to that mountain summit. It's you who has to walk up. That's why I said, you know, for all of you 46ers, this is an accomplishment that nobody can ever take away from you. You did it. You had to put the work in. You had to be gritty. You had to keep pushing. It's so easy to quit in these high peaks, right? We know I've done it. We know how difficult these mountains can be. We know how difficult climbing any mountain can be. Any outdoors activity can be difficult. But when you just keep pushing, you just get yourself to do the work, you will get to the summit. But it's it's ultimately, it's up to you. Nobody can do that for you. And, you know, talk about a 
a lesson that we apply to everything we do in life. You know, there's going to be people who help you along the way, you know, pe- you know, hiking partners helping you get to the top. You know, you forgot some, you need some help or they help motivate you to keep going. You know, you take breaks, all these things like these are, these are real lessons that apply to everything we do in life. Nobody can get you to the summit. It's up to you to do the work. And that's going to be no different than everything in your, your non hiking life as well. And then number two, one foot in front of the other is the formula and it will never change. Nothing will ever change. It is one foot in front of the other, whether you're going to the top of that mountain or you're going after a goal in life or you're trying to accomplish something new. You know, and it's with the mountains, it's like if you're too tired to get back down, oh well, too bad. You still got to walk down, you know, you got to walk back one foot in front of the other, whether you want to or not. There is no way down. You have to get yourself back one foot in front of the other. Don't look a mile ahead of you. Look for that next step and then look for the next step and then get there and then look for the next step. And before you know it, you'll be a mile further than you were when you first started or you first weren't feeling good and you first wanted to quit. And uh, also complaining along the way, it will not change anything. Now, I know, I know firsthand about you know, being on top of some mountains and, you know, knowing I still have seven miles back to the car. And, you know, I might, I might complain a bit here and there. And I definitely, not even might, I definitely do. I'm like, ah, I, this sucks. I'd like to be at the car now. I've had enough time in the woods today. I'm good. But, you know, seven miles back to the car still. And what can you do? And this is for, you know, this episode, these lessons, these are for me as much as they're for anybody else. So I just want to let that be known too. What can I do? But walk one foot in front of the other. I can complain. I can, you know, be pissed off or just be just over it, but that's not going to get me out of the mountains. It's not going to get me back to my car. It's not going to get, get those boots off and those Crocs on. It's not going to get that Stewart's milkshake down my, my gullet. I just have to keep walking one foot in front of the other. And for the, as being the type of person that, you know, one of my strengths in life is to, you know, put my head down and grind towards what I'm trying to do towards a goal, you know, something I'm trying to accomplish that it's not always been a strength of mine, but it's become a strength of mine. And, you know, my journey through four, through the 46 in one summer was just another, you know, another feather in my cap for that journey and building that strength. It's just another example of when I, it was hard, you know, nobody was making me do this. This was a goal that I set for myself you know, nobody really cared if I accomplished it or not, just me. But I know if I didn't go after it and I didn't keep pushing that I'm only cheating myself because I set the goal and I wanted to do it. So mountain by mountain, I kept pushing, you know, one step and one foot in front of the other over and over again. And, you know, in this situation, one foot in front of the other was mountain by mountain, but it's no different than accomplishing anything else. You just have to keep going, but you can't look too far ahead. And it's the same, you know, same thing with these mountains. When it's, when it sucks, it's just one foot in front of the other. You have to get yourself back. You can complain, you can whine. It's not going to change anything. You still have to walk. You still have to uh, get yourself out. And there's a lot, lot to, I could probably do a whole episode on that one fact. And, uh, but I, I won't keep going on that. But you, you understand, and that's, a, that's, you know, again, that's a lesson learned here in the high peaks in particular. Number three, now you'll all like this one. I get a lot of people asking me when I'm making this onto a t- into a t-shirt. The mountains don't care about you. And if you disrespect them, you will be put into your place. Uh, I could not figure out a better way to say that than to just tell you. The mountains don't care about you. The mountains aren't calling you. The mountains don't give a damn about you. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. You know, it it is up to us to respect them. It is up to us to respect nature, to treat it the best that we can, to, you know, revere it because it doesn't care about you. You know, the weather changes, you know, what happens if you, you know, you step on a rock and break your ankle and you're on top of dicks, you're in trouble you're in trouble. Or what happens if you, you know, decide to go up white face and it's, you know, a million degrees below zero and you get, you know, you're, you know, it's in the winter and it's like, you made a bad choice or you go up the trap dike and you made a bad choice and you get stuck there. It's like the mountains do not care about you. If you disrespect them, they will put you in your place. And how, I mean, there's, it's no different than anything in life. You disrespect people around you, you'll get put in your place. And it's just, it's just another, 
another parallel to everything that we can learn in life. And yes, I'll eventually get that on a t-shirt. I'll eventually uh, get around to doing that. If any of you are graphic designers and want to uh, make some fun designs, you uh, you holler at me and uh, we'll make it happen. But yeah, the mountains don't care about you. I can't say it enough. In fact, maybe that'll be the title of a book I write one day. Who knows? But uh, it's it, and I don't say I don't say that to upset people. I don't say that to you know. I'm definitely not poking fun or I'm not trying to upset anyone. I'm just being point blank honest because. A, I'm a bottom line kind of guy. I'm very blunt because uh, I'm just like, I just want the bottom line. Let's get to it faster. And then we can figure out the plan to move forward from there. Um, but the mountains don't care about you. They don't, they never will. It is up to us to respect them. And when we respect them, they will, I mean, they will, they will give us just the biggest adventure you could ever imagine. And if you disrespect them, they can, it can turn that adventure into your worst nightmare. Number four, your bank account, your status in life, your skin color, your age, your sex, they are all irrelevant. The mountains do not care. You will either get to the summit or you won't exactly the same as everybody else. So it doesn't matter. All those things that, you know, that all these things that let's just say divide society, completely irrelevant when you're in the mountains, you're either going to get to that summit or you're not. The mountain does not care about any of those things. And that con continues to go back to number three about the mountains don't care about you. And if you disrespect them, you'll be put in your place. It's up to you to respect them. It's up to you to do the work to get to the summit and all those different things, those different elements that I talked about, they are just irrelevant out there when you're on the trail, when you're climbing a mountain, when you're in the woods, when you're on the river, it doesn't make a difference. And I think there's a, I think there's a lot to, to unpack with that and a lot to take away that you're right. It doesn't make a difference. It's about getting to the top. And that's a, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Number five, climbing a mountain is hard. But it is so rewarding when you finally make it to the summit. But if you quit easily, you'll never experience the top. And uh, yeah, it's hard. Life is hard. Things we're trying to accomplish, it's hard. But talk about a lesson that the mountains will show you. And you can get there when you do one, when you put one foot in front of the other, when you don't quit. If you do quit easily, you turn around once it gets too hard or, you know, if you quit e very easily and you turn around very quickly, well, in life, you're never going to get to the top. You're never going to experience what you're after. You're never going to get to that point that you, you know, you've had your eyes set on because, oh, it got hard and you turned around. You know, you have to build grit. You have to, you have to persevere and th th there's nothing w more, per you know, per there's nothing more that you can do that than persevere when you're trying to get to the top of a mountain on a rainy day or on a day where it's hard, a day when the weather sucks, a day when you're just not feeling it or you you know you've you've pushed yourself to your limits and you you know it's it's hard. You just have to get to the summit and when you do it is rewarding when you get to the top. And it's it, you know like you're anything you're trying to do, you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get in, you know go get raise the uh or climb the ladder in your in your career path. It's always going to be hard and it should be hard. This stuff shouldn't be easy. You're climbing a mountain for God's sakes, but you know, it's what makes the, the summit so much more rewarding. But again, so if you're the type of person who quits easily, you'll never get to that summit. So if you do hike, you do, you don't have experience these mountains, but in other things in life, you quit easily. Just, you know, think back to, you know, these lessons that you'll, you can learn in the mountains that if you quit easily, you're never going to get to the summit. It's hard to get to the summit, but when you keep pushing, you keep putting one foot in front of the other and you refuse to stop, you will make it to the summit every time, no matter what. A beautiful lesson that, uh, the mountains will teach you time and time again. And, uh, number six, if you turn around because it's too hard, the mountains don't care. They will remain unchanged. The only one who loses is you. Once again, the mountains don't care about you. You know, it's it's up to you to push yourself. It's up to you to get out of it what you put into it and to, and to find the adventure that you want. Those mountains, they're going to be just fine without you. Again, you're the only one who loses if you turn around. And that's not, I mean, it's it's very literal if you turn around, but also just in life, think, you know, when we quit, when we don't, keep going when we just stop because things get hard 
the world doesn't care. <laughs> the world doesn't care at all. Other people aren't going to care. You know, I go back to my 46er journey. Would, did it matter if I finished the goal, you know, accomplished the goal and finished hiking the 46 high peaks period, let alone in, you know, the, the summer that I, I started them in? No, nobody cared. It didn't matter. The world will still go round and round. You know, my wife will still love me. My kids will still love me. It won't really matter. But I will know that I did not accomplish the goal that I set out to accomplish. And that is on me. I am the only one who loses in that situation. And that is, again, another lesson that I learned. Or maybe let's say, I didn't necessarily learn it, but uh, another lesson that is, you know, shown to me again and again in the high peaks. And then there's one other lesson that I have here that is actually based on a comment that somebody made on the post that I made. They were talking about Blake. And this got me thinking to my conversation with Jonathan Zaharik that we had when we recently hiked Dial Nipple Top Blake and Colvin. A lot of people talk trash on Blake and I totally get it. I totally get it. I did too. I uh, listened to the first season of the podcast. Um, I had a very different perspective than I do now, you know, I don't know, five or six years, five years removed now. And uh, yeah, multiple trips up Blake, you know, later, I think differently of the mountain. And it's because, well, I used to feel a mountain kind of sucks if there's no summit, there's no summit view at the top. It's not like a great spot to hang out. Or as I talk about in the podcast a lot, if it's not a great place to sit down and have a summit sandwich, but I don't think that way anymore. And uh, it's only because of, you know, perspective changing and coming with experience and experiencing more and more of the mountains and exploring them and just, you know, evolving, quite frankly, it's just evolving. I don't think every mountain summit should be awesome. Sometimes the the destination is just the destination, but it, it, the journey is what actually mattered or the adventure is what actually mattered. Things should be hard. Blake, for example, let's talk about Blake. Colvin, the summit of Colvin, fantastic spot. Then you go, you know, 700 feet down and 700 feet back up to Blake and you get to Blake and it's a wooded summit and you're just like, oh, well, this sucks. Yes, but at the, it, well, it's not your traditional summit that we know what you'd be super psyched on. You are still standing on top of a mountain. I mean, it's still awesome. You are just miles and miles back from anything, just in nature. You are in the thick of it. And these mountains, they have their place. The Marshalls, the, you know, the Street and Nyes. And a lot of people don't like Allen, but that's crazy to me. Allen has an absolutely ridiculous view on it. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a cool experience going out to Allen. But again, these are all these are all things that I don't blame people for thinking because I thought the same way. But I, you know, my my perspective has evolved over the years doing these podcasts and hiking these mountains again. You know, multiple rounds later, just hiking them again and again. So, what I'm getting to is that every mountain has its place in the journey to 46. Every mountain has its place in your life. Every all these different things that you go through. They're not always pleasant. They don't always have a great outcome, but persevering is a huge thing. These ad The adventure that you have is important, and it's important to realize that. And these are things that I learn in the mountains. The mountains teach me this exact message. Sometimes you're just going to climb a Blake, Blake peak. You're going to get to the top, and you're going to say, okay, that, here I am. I made it. But the beauty of it, you know, let's we'll call it the dopamine high because usually that's the dopamine high we get on the summits, right? When we see those beautiful views, the dopamine high is the satisfaction knowing that you just climbed this mountain and it didn't even go anywhere that spectacular, but you still did it. You still made it. And that there's satisfaction to be, to be had there. And, and that to me, sometimes that's the lesson. That's the bigger picture to take away. And, uh, you know, again, that's just a perspective shift that I've experienced over the years. And, you know, I look forward to, you know, I look forward to more lessons that I'll learn here in the high peaks, here in the ADK, on the water, in the mountains. It's just a, it's a mysterious place. And, you know, I look at the mountains and like I said earlier in the episode, every one of them is a character. Every one of them has a story. They're all different, unique people in my mind. 
And uh, God, it's just so, it's so great. I just love these mountains. I just love looking at them. I love walking in their woods and climbing them and just everything, everything that comes with the Adirondack Park. And again, if you know me, you know, I took all of that for granted growing up here. And then, it, you know, and then uh, once, once it grabbed hold of me and finally realized this is what it is, this is what you've been missing, it just became a completely new place. And uh, yeah, I'm forever grateful for the lessons that I've learned in the high peaks. I'm forever grateful for the the transformation that I've experienced in the high peaks, you know, in my mind and my love for the outdoors, my love for the mountains, for climbing them, for being in them, all the skills that I've learned, you know, outdoor skills that I've learned. It's just a, it's an amazing thing. And I definitely owe it all to the, to the Adirondack mountains. And uh, yeah, they get me, uh, they get me pretty psyched up. They get me emotional. They get me, uh, yeah, just filled with joy when I even think about the mountains. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of me just kind of uh, letting it rip here on the microphone. But I just kind of basically wanted to have the same conversation that I've had with two or three other people in the last couple of weeks just about the mountains because I just feel so passionately about them. And I know everybody else does too. I just, it's like every day I hear a new, new story from someone about how these mountains changed their life talk about an amazing thing and it's an it's an immediate bond that you have with all these other people who have also been transformed by the 46 high peaks it's just a beautiful thing and to me it will never ever get old so uh thank you to the adirondack mountains and uh thank you to all of you for listening to this uh this episode of the 46 of 46 podcast again if you're coming up to the 46er banquet in lake placid this weekend congratulations to you you did that work you experienced something that most people will never experience. And uh, I, res- I have so much respect for it and I applaud you. But that'll do it for this episode of the 46 of 46 podcast. Head over to 46 of 46.com. Check out what I have there. If you are about to start climbing these mountains or you're even in, on your journey so far, I have an ebook called From 1 to 46, A Complete Guide to Climbing the 46 High Peaks. That's available on my website. I also offer a guide service. You can you know, book that on the website as well. Check back on Fridays for new mountains, new stories, new guests, and new episodes here on the 46 of 46 podcast. I want to also remind all of you that October is coming. And if you followed this podcast for long enough, you know the October sessions are just a week away. All right, that will be exciting. Thanks to everyone for listening to this episode of the 46 of 46 podcast. Remember to always leave no trace, do the rock walk. And if you carry it in, carry it out. See you on the trails, everybody, and thank you again to the Adirondack Mountains for the transformation that you've given me.